Most important, as educators, I do want to say um, what's important to us, who I really want to thank, are our parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
district can come in many forms. From phone bank days where we call the district and fill board members' answering machines with demands to settle. We can boycott businesses that are part of the Portland Business Alliance. Yeah. An anti-PAT group that stands firmly behind the district in negotiations. And we can rally. We must, we must make our voices heard at every board meeting and inside every school. The month of November will be filled with actions, from info nights to campus walkouts. Let's bring the whole city together and demand the district preserve public education. something that we want to happen, and it's going to go like this. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Yvonne Deckard's got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Yvonne Deckard's got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Yvonne Deckard's got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Yvonne Deckard's got to go. Beautiful, you sound beautiful. Just so you know, if you don't know who that is, she's getting paid $15,000 a month by our district to head up their bargaining team. All right, let's try one more. This is, this is a really important chant because the district thinks they have all the power. They don't know what kind of power we have. So we're gonna tell them, this is how it goes. I say, who's got the power? And you say, I say what kind of power, and you say? Union power. Beautiful. Let's try it. Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? Union power. Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? Union power. Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? Union power. Beautiful. All right, let's head in. C-H-R-I-S-T, really. Um, just excuse me, I'm kind of nervous. It's this okay. is new. Um, my eighth grade year was marked by the best teacher I've ever had. He taught English and social studies, but beyond that, he refused to confine us to solely those subjects. The classroom, pardon my cliche, extended beyond the set curriculum into a holistic look on every topic we touched. 
be it the slave trade, the 60s, or to kill a mockingbird. He was the type of teacher who defied censorship, who created room for opinion, and who challenged his class of 13 and 14 year olds to write 10 plus page papers on trimester long projects. When I eventually left that classroom for good, I did so as begrudgingly as possible, for I knew I wouldn't have an experience like that again. I'm someone who throws away all my work at the end of the year, but everything I did in eighth grade is in a folder in the desk in my room. It is an undeniable fact that the best classroom experiences are those taught by teachers who truly love what they're teaching. Teachers with the freedom to open up on their opinions, yet will you to, make, will you to form your own. The student-focused proposal enables every student to have the experience I did in eighth grade by giving teachers the academic freedom they deserve. I really urge you to pressure the district to really consider this student-focused proposal. It is time that the district has shifted its priorities from benchmarks and budgets to teachers and students. My education is not and shouldn't ever be. business leaders, and politicians. We have watched teachers lose almost all ability to collaborate and create curriculum they are truly passionate about. Instead, we have been taught to worksheets and standardized tests, tests which my peers and I have been taking since we were eight years old. Should we really be hammering memorization and button clicking into young children? No. Not at eight years old, not at 10 years old, and not at 17 years old. We should be taught to ask questions and explore answers. We should be taught a love of reading, and we should be shown that school is a place to become passionate about the complex world around us. Not to have that same passion, which is inherent in all students, stifled by policies put forth by district proposals that force us all into narrow curriculum and overwhelming class sizes. I know teachers feel the same, because when I look at the two proposals here, only theirs is willing to talk about the needs of students. Show your teachers the respect they deserve as professionals and start bargaining. Yeah. Uh, Gwen Sullivan of PAT per our contract with the Portland Association of Teachers. Their president. to speak today and listening to our very important stories. It's hard for me to hear these. It's really hard. But I think um, I come to you today because it's the familiar message to listen to teachers and to talk with teachers. And we think it's really important that you hear the stories that are happening in our schools, that they're not made up, that there's a serious problem in our schools. We want to look to figure out how we solve these issues together. We could be looking at, together, how to reduce class size and workload, not just eliminating certain portions of the contract, um, those protections about workload have been there, and they are the only thing at this point that has any protection to a student's um, learning condition is that workload language. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. We 
understand that there's been devastating years of cuts, and we're happy to, to hear that there's more money coming in. Um, and we believe that there is um, a way that we could have a better process of making sure that that, that money gets spent in a way that actually has direct impact to kids. We think that there should be a process for that. <laughs> have the Portland values yeah. in making yep. sure that we do this the right way and don't go down a path that uh, we can't turn back from because I don't think that those the pathway that it looks like we're being forced to go is not it's not just not good for educators it's terrible for students and it certainly is terrible for this whole city so please work with us not against us for the sake of our students. amen yeah.